Some vampires want to suck your blood, and some just end up sucking. These are the top 10 worst vampire films. First up is a movie that made it onto both the worst and the best vampire movie lists. It's tough to remember a world before vampires sparkled more than Kristen Stewart's personality in 2008's Twilight. Bella, look out! That pale kid is gonna save you, and to repay him, you have to tolerate him staring at you. Yeah, I know he fascinates you, honey, but as a rule, never trust a guy who spent more time on his hair than you, and whose idea of a fun date is climbing trees and then throwing them around. That's called caber tossing, and it is not considered a sign of stability. Everyone enjoys love stories, but not so much when they star mopey teens who sit around and stare at each other, saying overly dramatic things. What if I'm not the hero? What if I'm... Bad guy. Uh, yeah, I dated this guy in high school, and let me give you a glimpse of your future. Dead black roses on the prom you don't go to, and a never-ending mixtape of Elliot Smith and My Chemical Romance playing in his Ford Focus. I had really high hopes for this reimagining of Dark Shadows by Tim Burton. See, look, it's pretty. Johnny Depp is in it with creepy hands. But I guess I should have seen the signs. What is the year? 1972. 1972. Yeah, a lava lamp and superfly. It's a little weird, but it could still be funny. Barnabas has returned to his home to find his ancestors staying there. How soon can the horses be ready? We don't have horses. We have a Chevy. No, I'm fine with puns too. And look, the Bond girl is in it. It has to be good. She for real? Is your hairdresser for real? Uh-oh, I feel the scales tipping. I shall restore the family business to its former glory. No, Tim, why are we venturing into Barnabas as an industrial titan territory while we're still dealing with crazy ex-girlfriends and angry teens? Pick a tone and stick to it, Tim. What a missed opportunity. Look around you. The monsters you read about as a kid, they're real. And the key to their survival is making sure none of us know they're here. And they're surprisingly uninteresting in Dylan Dog Dead of Night. Way to go, Hollywood. You took a much-loved comic book and turned it into something considerably less awesome. Dylan used to be a private investigator that handled supernatural crime, but he quit when his fiance was murdered. He gets pulled back in because a guy gets killed while smuggling something that all monsters want to get their hands on. No, not a better script. Some blood or something. The problem is, the whole thing is too convoluted and everyone looks like they're asleep. <laughs> What is this? What is that? You're the living dead, Marcus. Oh, well, that guy was actually dead, but same difference. Tay Diggs is pretty fun in it, but here comes the kiss of death. Are you ready? You recognize the main actor, right? Oh, hey, everybody. Remember that marginally better remake that starred this guy as Superman? Ugh, poor Brandon Ralph. You deserved better. So what's the plan? No plan. Just bigger guns. It's not a discussion about bad films until you say the words Uwe Boll, right? This German director is responsible for some of the most fundiculous movies of all time, not the least of which is Blood Rain, starring the Terminator that everyone was uncomfortably attracted to, Kristana Loken. Uwe isn't known for his dead-on writing, but this seems accurate. A father. Yes. A daughter. Yes. A mighty leader. Oh, hold on there. Michael Madsen, a mighty leader? How much disbelief do I have to suspend, Uwe? Rain is half human, half vampire, and she has to set out to find the three keys to vampire immortality before her mean dad does. It's all kind of horribly hilarious, which is what Uwe Boll sets out to do. Or at least I hope so. Here's what you can expect from this movie. She feasts. She lusts. <sighs> Slaves. That sounds like me on Sundays at the hometown buffet after church. Sometimes your family can really suck the life out of you, especially if they're vampires. The bleeding is totally bizarre, as evidenced by the costumes. I assure you that the concept of Vinnie Jones in a wig is way scarier than anything you'll run into here. Wait, where did his wig go? Okay, now that makes me uneasy. Here's Michael Madsen again, this time as a priest, if you can believe that trying to convince the poor man's Vin Diesel that he's important. Jane is not my brother. He was your brother. That makes you the slayer. Well, praise the Lord. He's convinced, so now he's gonna take out his bro and all of his vamp friends in a chemical weapons factory turned nightclub. And Kat Von D is there too, so everyone can get matching tattoos afterward. I'm gonna blow that place to kingdom come. Even though he's undead, producers thought Dracula needed to be more hip, so they put 2,000 after his name and crossed their fingers. 
didn't work. A coffin is stolen by Omar Epps, who bounces light bulbs off people's heads. He doesn't know the king of all vamps is in there, so it's particularly shocking when he makes an appearance. For some inexplicable reason, Christopher Plummer agreed to be in this film and keeps mispronouncing Dracula. Draculia, not Miss Israel. The rest of it makes about as much sense. What has happened in there? We're asking ourselves the same thing, Angelina Jolie's ex-boyfriend. See, look, she's doing an impression of people watching the movie. You know what's really scary? The fact that this animation probably cost more than a PA made during the duration of filming on the classic So Bad It's Good Rockula. He's shy. Why? Because people mistake him for Eugene Levy? No, we all know that's Dean Cameron, also from 80s classic summer school. He's a nice guy. But the fact that he plays a 400-year-old virgin who keeps falling for the same girl is tragic. I love you, you love me. If you don't listen to me, you're gonna die. Oh man, we've all heard that one before. Because it has a heaping amount of bizarre images common to wacky 80s sex rock comedies, plus a sweet rock and roll break. Must watch with a healthy dose of irony, or you're gonna want to kill yourself before Dracula even gets to you. Dracula is a figure firmly rooted in movie monster history. Yesterday, Dracula was the most fearsome being the screen has ever seen. Today, well, today he's hanging out with go-go dancers. In his sixth Dracula film for Hammer Films, Christopher Lee gets funky. He's waiting to freak you out right out of this world. He doesn't want to freak you out by touching your boobs. No, he's going to freak you out by climbing the stairs, slowly. Stephanie Beecham is in this, which is a bonus, even if she does need some of those oil blotter paper thingies. <sighs> oh my god, who could forget the game-changing appearance by Stoneground, who later became Pablo Cruz, once they figured out that they had been in too many awful movies under the name Stoneground. Swear before the name of the devil to keep it secret. No bands were dumb enough to appear in this next movie that featured, wait, wolves, ships, and trains? Where my vampire's at? Oh, wait, there he is, and he's in Brooklyn. Oh, and he reeks of desperation. Interesting. I've been stabbed, and I've been hanged. Even broken on the rack once, but I've never been shot before. Well, the night is still young if you keep forcing me to watch this movie. Do I look like I would buy it to you? No, and that's the problem. Everything about this movie is wrong and unfunny. If you're hungry, I'll run you down to KFC down the street and hit you off with a two-piece. <laughs> I already had to tell you. Nope, not funny. Hero is good! Come here, y'all say it. Hero is good! Also, not funny. I'm a cop. If you uh, try anything funny, I'll shoot you. No danger there, Angela. This whole movie is just one big ball of unfunny. The only number one spot this movie's ever been given is at the top of a list of bad films. Sorry, huge Ackman but everybody wanted to drive a stake through your heart as Van Helsing. First problem, hair. None of the monsters you're supposed to kill are scared of you because you look like my cousin Bertha, who no one can convince to get laser hair removal. Second problem, setting. It is a place where nightmares come to life. No, this theater is where our nightmares are coming to life, spending 12 bucks on this crap. Third problem, accents. He's the first one to kill a vampire in over a hundred years. I'd say that sent him a drink. Now what can you do to earn a lesson with a dialect coach? I could continue, but instead I will say that the movie has cool effects, but terrible everything else. Even when Hugh Jackman takes his shirt off, it can't save a film that should be laid to rest for good. Oh, God, I need to sink my teeth into a cocktail after all that nonsense. Woof. Well, this week it was all about the worst vampire movies, but next week we're embracing the positive, and we're going to talk about the best vampire movies. In the meantime, <sighs> click subscribe and leave comments as to what we forgot. And, by the way, thank you, and Lovelace, for giving me the award for best hair. I love you. Are you Linda's sister? Call me. And we'll see you next week. It's an election year, which means you need to brush up on the best political movies of all time. Gray Drake, senior editor of Rotten Tomatoes, clears the chads and casts a vote. Devin Faraci bellies up for a martini with three fellow critics to decide which Bond is the greatest. Phil Gower decides to take his love of Twilight to the streets, determined to be first in line. His love of Twilight is twi-hard and will not die. 
Devin Faraci takes you on a behind-the-scenes tour of Universal Studios and gives you insight into the creation and locations that birthed some of the greatest monster movies of all time. J.B. Smoove and his buddy Garfield give us the lowdown on the new Robert Zemeckis film, Flight, even though they haven't seen it. Wreck-It Ralph's John C. Riley, Jane Lynch, Jack McBriar, and director Rich Moore get put through the ringer by Jesse Miller. 